Be sure to check out all of our interviews at athletesangle.com, where you can also find the podcast from all of our past episodes, as well as blogs about the show, including Take 5. We talking about practice. Not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. Practice, man. I mean, how silly is that? Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. I don't really think that me breaking Jerry Rice's record was special. Um, I think shutting you guys up is really what made it special. All right, joining us now on Athlete's Angle is Braden Shen, Canada's World Junior Hero. First off, congratulations on a great showing at the World Junior Tournament. Thank you very much. It's been a pretty hectic year for you. You started the season with the LA Kings, then moved on to the Manchester Monarchs to play in the AHL. Then you got headed back to Brandon to join the Wheat Kings in the WHL. Not long after that, you headed off to Team Canada to play at the World Junior Tournament. And then after you get back from the tournament, you get traded to the Saskatoon Blades, your hometown, to start off the second half of the WHL season. How difficult do you find it to focus on hockey with all the moving around you've been doing? Uh, you just try to keep your focus as best you can. I mean, uh, obviously you got to uh, worry about the task in hand. And uh, for me, yeah, I've been all over since uh, you know September 8th or whatever it was. But uh, it's good to be home now, and uh, I can't wait to uh, play my first game as a blade. When you move that much in such a short period of time, do you have any idea of what your postal code ever is? Uh, <laughs> no, we always use the, the home one, and that's it. <laughs> There were so many other things that must be keeping you busy while moving, the packing, the unpacking, traveling, finding new living arrangements or accommodations, and basically getting set up in a new city. Have you find that you've been able to use hockey as an escape from all those other distractions? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, when you're, you know, when I was in L.A., um, there was a bunch of us in the hotel, and we always had, had to move in and out uh, just so they didn't have to pay for two hotels, and uh, uh, obviously I was in Manchester for a bit, and uh, Team Canada, and so I was kind of in a hotel, uh, you know, pretty much for you know four months there. I, I was there a little bit in the summer as well, and uh, I'm sick of the hotel. And uh, you know, it's good to be home now. You started the season in the NHL, as we mentioned, with the LA Kings. What, in your mind, did you find was the biggest difference in the pro game compared to the WHL? Uh, I think the defense is on play, uh, the positioning, and uh, you know, just little things like having a good stick and not getting beat off the wall and uh, you know little things that are going to keep you at that next level and uh, for me that was the biggest difference. Do you find you had a huge advantage going to the World Junior Tournament after just b- spending so much time in the pros in the first half of the season? I mean yeah I learned a lot there but I wasn't playing a whole lot so um, from the learning standpoint it was a big advantage but from the playing standpoint it wasn't you know I had to get back in shape and or back in game shape and uh, get back and playing to a, a lot of minutes and stuff like that so uh, there's advantages and disadvantages, uh, you know, for for being in LA in that time. But I thought I handled it pretty well. All right. So today we want to take a look on athletes' angle, the difference between the pro game and the amateur game in terms of outside the arena. So briefly describe to us what a typical day in the NHL was like for you, from the point from the time you wake up in the morning to the time you go to bed. Yeah, wake up. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's a little different when uh, you know the older guys have families. But for me, it was. Uh, I uh, wake up probably about eight o'clock. Go to the go to the ring for practice, work out, and you're pretty much done your day by 12:30. And you have the rest of the day to do whatever you want. Um, you know, obviously, guys with the families, they go home to their families and, and kids and stuff like that. But uh, when you're 19 years old, it's a little different. When you're, I guess, 30, so it's uh, you know, that's the the difference between uh, uh, being a rookie and a veteran. Now, how does that differ from a typical day in the WHL? Yeah, WHL. Uh, you know, obviously you got guys in school, so you got to wait around uh, to practice. And um, so WHL day would probably be, uh, you know, checking at ten and uh, kind of wait around to your workout and um, just hang out with the guys and um, practice at two thirty, and then you're done your day by about five. So obviously there's a, a quite a difference between the, the NHL and the WHL just the scheduling wise, but um, that's what happens when uh, guys are in school. Now you mentioned with the NHL dealing with guys with families and stuff like that, whereas the WHL you're playing with all guys your same age and pretty much in the same circumstances in their life. Did you find the camaraderie was maybe a little bit stronger in the WHL? Um, yeah, I mean, guys like, uh, um, you know, they're closer just because they're, uh, you know, they live away from home and that's the, that's the way they, they bond together is, uh, and, you know, try not to get homesick is by hanging out with each other and obviously in the NHL it's, uh, you know, guys are, have families and 
Uh, they're older, and there's different separation uh, between the ages. And so I think the WHL is obviously a, a little closer to this group just because you hang out pretty much 24-7. Now, do the off-ice responsibilities or commitments of an NHL player differ from a WHL player? Um, I mean, you try to act professional in both in both leagues. You know, in the WHL, you're you're learning to become a pro, and we're trying to, anyways. In the NHL, you gotta obviously respect everything, and uh, you know, just because there's a lot of eyes on you, um, you know, in the media, you don't want to be getting caught doing anything uh, that's gonna get you in trouble. So, uh, uh, I guess it's uh, pretty similar in both leagues. Did you have a lot of community commitments? I mean, going to fundraisers or going to just public appearances, I guess, with the Kings as compared to the WHL, or do you say it's pretty comparable? Um, no, I mean, it's pretty comparable, but I think in a, in a bigger hockey market like um, Toronto or you know, Calgary or um, you know, New York, you know, stuff like that, you know, LA is a growing market right now. And, but I think in, you know, just, just from knowing from Toronto, um, they do a lot more. And we did in LA just because it's, uh, um, you know, the city's a lot more hockey crazy. And uh, at the same time, you know, LA's doing a good job and they're, they're getting to be that stage. Do you find you had more free time when you were in the NHL or not, do you find you have more now back in the WHL? Uh, I think a lot more in the NHL just because you're done your day by about 12.30. Um, you got a lot to do. So I guess in LA, you got to go to the, the beach and, uh, you know, pretty much do whatever you want uh, from 12.30 on if you weren't playing that day. Are things like off-ice workouts, diets, recovery sessions, or therapy, are those things sort of controlled by the team once you start getting to an elite level like the WHL? Into the WHL or NHL? <laughs> Sorry, WHL. I'll, I'll say uh, the Saskatoon Blades or Brandon Wheat Kings. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of controlled by the team. Uh, I know Brandon's uh, different from the Blades, and every, every team has their different ways. So um, you know, I guess when you're uh, you know, in the WHL, it's a lot more controlled than the NHL obviously you can you still have to do your workouts but I guess you kind of I guess the older guys have their own way and they've been in the league for a long time and uh, I guess they kind of do what they know what to get them ready. We are joined by the 2009 fifth overall draft pick in the NHL Braden Shen of the Los Angeles Kings. He is now with the Saskatoon Blades after a trade of the deadline. Uh, Braden you were a pretty popular guy though when you played in Brandon and I'm sure that the public constantly wanted more Braden Shen in their life. How did you learn to handle yourself in interviews and special event appearances when you were re- representing the team outside of the arena? Uh, yeah, that's kind of uh, relates back to the question before. Just be professional and um, don't want to do anything that gets you in trouble. And as far as the media, the interviews and all that go, um, I know when I was younger, I was, you know, wasn't too good at them. But as you do more and uh, learn more, and I guess you watch TV, you know, the, the NHL guys doing interviews and stuff like that, you just pick up on stuff and. Uh, um, I guess as you do more, um, you know, you become, become more smooth as well. Now, you must have been clearly threatened or coerced in some sort of way to participate in this interview with Athletes Angle today. Have, uh, you, have the Saskatoon Blades given you any specific instructions on how to handle yourself with the media? I mean, I played in Montreal with the Alouettes, and we had sessions or seminars on how to handle the media. Do you get that kind of training anywhere you've been so far? Um, younger, when I was, uh, you know, towards the under-17, um, I know there's they or under 18 they bring in guys on how to handle the media and stuff like that. But um, like I said before, you just learn, and uh, um, that's the main thing. Is just as you do more, you learn more. Now I'm sure you're finding out the higher you go up, teams start to view players a lot more as assets, in in a way. And I would like to think that they take uh, teams take it upon themselves to protect their investments in a player. How does a team like the Los Angeles Kings go about protecting their money and time that they've invested in you so far? Um, <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I, I don't really know the answer to it, but I guess, uh, um, yeah, obviously I'm a prospect for them, and uh, they're going to try to get me to the NHL as quick as they can. And um, for them, it's just little things like uh, you know coming out to watch me and or uh, having me train there or uh, doing, seeing how I'm trained, stuff like that. Um, Obviously, I'm a pick of theirs, so they want to you know, see where I'm at. Now, a lot of pro sport teams these days are starting to enlist the help of placement consultants to help athletes and their families adjust to new cities. These placement consultants often work on behalf of the athlete and help them with tasks such as like looking for a place to live or finding schools for their children. Did the LA Kings help you adjust to their city at all? Um, obviously, a little bit for me. I was in a hotel. I, I know the older guys that have families and kids that are going to school and stuff like that it's a little different but for me I was just kind of in a hotel still trying to make the team so they help you adjust a little bit but uh, you know, once once you're on the team I'm sure it's a little different 
Now again, like as I mentioned before, you have managed to fit a lot of moving around in your first half of your 2010-2011 season. How has playing for so many different teams at so many different levels helped you develop as a hockey player? Yeah, I mean, it's only been over uh, half a year, and I guess uh, time will only tell, but so far it's uh, going pretty good, and uh, I've enjoyed playing for, I guess, uh, all five teams uh, this year. Have you been following the Kings at all much this season? Yeah, I've been, ever since I left there, I when I have a game on, or if I'm able to watch, I will, and her, see, how they're, see how they're doing, and uh, as of late, um, they've been on a little slide, and hopefully they can pick that back up. Speaking of that slide, did you happen to see that the Toronto Maple Leafs and your brother Leafs defenseman Luke Shen came into LA and beat the Kings by a score of three to two? Does Luke earn any sort of bragging rights over you for that one? Uh, I don't think so. I wasn't playing in the game, and uh, so uh, he can brag all he wants. But I guess I wasn't there to do anything about it. He was the MVP of the World Junior Hockey Championship this year, scoring 18 points in the tournament. He is Braden Shen. Thanks a lot for joining us today on Athlete Angle. Thanks for having me. So there you have it, folks. Thanks for listening to Athlete's Angle with Ryan Carrett here on 101.5 UMFM.